God bless you. God bless you. Praise the Lord, everybody. Yes. This is another Sunday that we are here to lift up the name of Jesus, to honor him and to give him glory as we worship him in spirit and truth for being yes. the author and the finisher of our faith, the Alpha, the Omega, yes. the beginning and the end and all that in between. So we want to just invite you to come on in with us on this beautiful bless Sunday, you, bless you. Yes. this uh, Sunday, December, what is this, December 17th, yes. 2023. As we lift up the name of Jesus, as we go into the word of God, as he has prepared a word for us to hear on today from on high, his reign of word, go ahead and connect with someone. Let them know that we are here on Facebook Live as well as on the conference line. Come on in where the table is spread for you to receive what you need from the Lord. I am Apostle Dr. Dawn Nickel Manning. And I am Bishop Dennis Manning. And we are the pastors of Love of Jesus Deliverance Ministries. And we just want you to know once again that we're so happy to be a part of God's plan where we are here to serve you in the capacity of letting you know that God can make a way out of no way. Bishop, let's start in prayer. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this time and this hour to sup with you, to honor you, to praise you, to lift you up on high, Lord, just to be in the land of the living, Lord. That's enough to say thank you, Lord. Yes. We honor you. Any day above ground is a good day. Thank you for being above ground, Lord. We love you. Bless you, God. We lift you up, God, in the name of We exalt your name today, God. You are worthy of the cause. You are worthy of the high praise. You are a merciful God, omnipotent God. Our Jehovah Jireh, our Jehovah Nisi, our Jehovah. Lord, we love you. We thank you, God, for the blood yet running one through our veins, activities of our limb, clothes in our right mind. Bless you with the fruit of our lips. Use us for your glory. Have your way today, God. We exalt your name today. We bless you, God. We thank you for God just to breathe your fresh air, God, to wake up to look at some hands and look at some feet, God, in the name of Jesus, Lord, to touch our bodies today, God. Lord, heal us. Any sickness in our bodies, anybody bodies, touch them right now. In the name of Jesus, we bless you. We honor you. We praise you. Let the church say amen, amen, amen and amen. amen. Once again, we welcome you in the name of the Father, Son, and the Blessed Holy Ghost. Welcome to the love of Jesus, Deliverance yes. Ministries, and we are here to make sure that you receive the word, that you bring yourself into a place where you acknowledge God and that you honor him and that you worship him in spirit and in truth. Our job is to make sure that you stay connected to the vine. So we are here and we are in service to make sure that you get what you need by connecting with your heavenly father yes. through this time of worship. I would like to say thank you to each and every person who lifts this ministry up, who shares words of encouragement, uh, those of you who give in contributions, those of you who give in your donations, tithes and offerings. We say thank you, thank you because thank you, you understand you. that there is a need to be met when say ministry it, has to it. go forth. Yes. Kingdom work is serious work and it does require revenue. So we thank you for just being uh, considerate. We thank you for being obedient, first and foremost, to the voice of God as he leads you and he directs you. We want you to know that we are working things out. Uh, we are making sure that uh, the things that need to be taken care of, um, as far as the kingdom work is concerned, that we are doing just that. I'm excited. Um, our construction is on the way. Uh, we wanted it to be a little bit sooner, but we had to wait for all of these different permits and things. But now everything is uh, underway. Construction is going forth. Um, I've, I've spoken to the contractor and uh, I, I just thank God that our contractor is a believer as well. So he understands what it means to uh, uh, do the work pertaining to the kingdom of God. So I'm so happy that God, he just makes things beautiful in his time and he works things out. Yes. He knows what we need. Um, our new location is in Union, New Jersey on 1034 Salem Road. So we just give God honor. We give God praise for what he's doing, how he's working things out. And we, we're excited and it's, it's Man. just, uh, but you know, we have to wait, but we're hoping in the month of March, we'll be able to be in our new edifice. Uh, but we are going to just simply keep on praying. We're going to keep on believing and doing what God is calling us to do. That's why we are on the forums of the conference line and Facebook live, because we want to remain connected. We want to make, remain um, intertwined like that three strand cord, uh, cord where we are not easily broken. Nice. So uh, once again, we thank God for you and we thank God for uh, what you are doing and how you are 
are working with this ministry. And we ask that you continue to do so, knowing that you are going to be blessed in return. When you sow seed into the good ground of love of Jesus deliverance, you are going to be blessed in return. I always give the scripture, Malachi chapter three, verse 10, where God said, let me prove myself to you, wherein you make sure that the things are taken care of for the storehouse. I will open up a window of heaven. Let me prove it to you. He said, I will open up the windows of heaven and pour you out a blessing wherein you will not have enough room to receive. I don't know about you, but I've never seen the righteous forsaken nor seed out begging bread. And I'm a part of that perpetual covenant. And I know that when God says something, I know that his word is sure and true. And I thank him because I have been a witness that God will supply each and every one of our needs according to his riches and glory. You can't beat God's giving no matter how you try. Bishop, your commentary. Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord, everybody. This is something that the men do on Thursday. I'm just going to use this scripture because you need love. Uh, Hebrews 13 and 1, it said, let brotherly love continue. Thanks to God. I want to talk about love because it's a simple fact. A lot of people don't got love in their heart. Mm -hmm. And it's sad uh, for you to be a Christian and say you saved, sanctified, set apart, filled with the precious Holy Ghost. And you talking about you love somebody. Mm. How you love somebody, you got hate in your heart. Jesus. You got jealousy in your heart. You got gossip in your mouth. Jesus. You got to be careful who you put your mouth on. The word of God said, touch not my anointing and do my prophet no harm. Thanks mm. to God. You got too much gossipers. Jesus. You got too much people hating on. You know what? People, people jealous of your anointing. Mm. Mm. Help me, Holy Ghost. Help me, Holy Ghost. Uh, uh, do this commentary. Thanks to God. Let brotherly love continue. I don't care if you're a man, woman, boy, or girl. You got the love. Jesus is love. You hear me? People hate on you. They want to be like, it's only one of you. Nobody can be like you. God only made one. Uh, like He made Adam and Eve. That's it. Ain't no more. Ain't no more. Uh, 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 I, I want to be like Apostle Dawn, Bishop, this, this, that, and that. It's only one of you. What vex my spirit and bothers my heart. You got people laugh in your face. Soon as you turn your back, they got a dagger in your back. And it's sad. You know, God will reveal. Help me, Holy Ghost. God will reveal something to you and show you who. That's why I say to God, help me, Lord. Let me pronounce this right. You got to have the discernment of the Holy Ghost. You got to have a discernment spirit. You got to be filled with the right spirit. You got to be closed in your right mind. You got to be in the right spirit. Thanks to God. Let brother, you got to keep that love in your heart. Look, I'm not going to walk around here and say I love Christ who I never seen before and I got hate in my heart. It's sad that you got hate in your heart and you tell me you love your brother and sister. How you say you love your brother and sister? And you gossiping, hating, and, um, oh, well, help me hold it. It said, uh, the word of God said, uh, let me, let me try to put, say it right. Uh, watch you labor among you, saints of God. Watch you around, even at your workplace. You'll be surprised who hate on you. Folks hate on you so hard. It's sad. They come around with a phony grin. They come around, they laugh. They did. Oh, how you, oh, how you doing, my brother? How you doing? Such and such. How you this, that, and the other. You know that phony spirit when they see it. That's why you got to deserve. You'll see it coming. They'll come up and this, that, and the They, they want to get close to you. They want to sit by you. They want to be uh, around you. That, don't, don't have no, no, no meetings on your job. Don't be this and that. Don't, don't have no meetings on your job. This, that, and the other. Folks, it's just, you know what, thanks for God? You got to have the right spirit. Show more love out here. Even tell the person, I love you. And in spite of, of what I'm going through, I, I, I'm going through, don't, don't let stress, don't let weariness ease up. Tell somebody you love them. In spite of, check on them. This, that, and the other. Thanks for God. I just stopped by to, 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 to tell you, let brotherly love continue. Keep love in your heart. Keep Christ first, no matter what you do. I know we're going through some ups and downs. I know we're going through some trials and tribulations and things. Keep brotherly love in your heart, no matter what you do. God bless you, saints of God. Keep the love of Christ in your heart. God bless you. Amen. Amen. Greatest commandment is that we love one another. God requires us to love one another. That is so important that we keep love in our hearts. See, because love is going to keep us from hurting one another. See, you don't know what people are going through. 
Um, it's so easy to look at someone on the outside um, because you may have spent a moment with them. <laughs> Some people stay on Facebook and they look at pictures and, you know, people think that that's everyday moments, you know, or how of how a person may live their lives. But we don't know what each other is going through. And therefore, the compassion that you desire for yourself is why we love one another, because you want people to be compassionate for you. You have to be compassionate for others as well. You can't just think that, oh, you know, oh, uh, when I'm going through, I just want people to have attention towards what I'm dealing with and what I'm going through. But when things are, are turned around and somebody else is going through or someone else, you know, they may not say any or everything, but you don't know what they're dealing with, but you don't have any empathy or consideration for them. And, you know, that causes for, once again, for people to not treat one another the way that they should treat one another. And that's what love, that's what love does. Love is understanding. Love is kind. Love is compassionate. Love is empathetic. Uh, and, and, and it just, love is, is something that goes beyond just being in the presence and trying to size somebody up. It's pitiful. We got so many people that's trying to size somebody else up instead of having the eye of love, the eye of jealousy, the eye of competition. All of those things, it destroys communication. It, it, it destroys synergy and it destroys progress. And see, that's how the enemy operates. He comes to do what? To kill, steal and destroy. And so that's why the enemy will try to block love being continually uh, uh, shed towards one another. He will try to break that down. He will try to destroy that. And it's up for us, the believers, to be steadfast, unmovable, abounding in the word of God, knowing what the commandment is to love thy brother, love your brother, love your sister as yourself. And, and sometimes, you know, some people don't love themselves. You got to love yourself. You got to love yourself and you got to thank God for who you are. You got to know what it means to base and to abound. You need to know how to be content where you're at. Whatever you're working out, wherever you're trying to go, don't let your ambitious cause for you to, to tr step over somebody else or hurt or harm someone else. Let your love, let that brotherly love continue to flow. We thank God for the commentary. We thank God for the man of God. <clears throat> and we just... Pray that, you know, we apply what is being taught to us as God gives us different vessels uh, to be used and instruments to be used, gifts to be given so that the church can be edified, so that the church can be uplifted. We pray that those things are being done because those who are listening have an intent to hear what the Lord is saying and then apply and allow for that, what has been taught to be executed and demonstrated in their life. So to God be all the glory. Let us go into the word on today. Father, we just honor you and bless you for who you are. We thank you for all things great and small, your goodness and your mercies that are new every morning. We thank you for your peace that surpasses all understanding. We thank you for being there when we feel alone and we feel as if no one else is around. Oh God, you always step right on in. And Father God, you give to us what we need when we need it. Or oh, your people say that he may not, you may not come when you want uh, 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 you to come. But Father, I thank you because you are right on time. You you step in right on time, and for that, Father, we give you praise. So now in this moment, as we go into this word, Father God, we ask that you, Lord Jesus, take away any distractions. We ask, Father, that you open up our understanding for those who are hearing. Let us be intentional to hear what the word is saying, Father God, so that we can apply it to our hearts. And when life troubles and tribulations come our way, we'll be able to stand on your word. So Father, I just thank you right now for clarity and articulation of speech. I ask, Father, that you just take me out of the flesh, put me into the supernatural to speak, Father God, what you are saying in this moment. For you are the potter, I am but the clay. Give me your divine words to say. In Jesus' name, amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. If you would um, get your word, if you uh, have your physical Bible or you're using it, using an electronic device, I am coming out of First Thessalonians chapter five. First Thessalonians chapter five. Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. Here we go. Verse 16 through 18, it says, rejoice evermore, pray 
without ceasing. And everything give thanks, for this is the will of God and Christ Jesus concerning you. Today's message is, what are you praying for? What are you praying for? Um, I was speaking with one of my um, dear sisters and friend on yesterday, uh, one of my branch sisters um, from the National Association of University Women, and we were having a conversation and we were talking about prayer. And God just inspired me through our conversation um, to uh, to come to this scripture to develop the message on what are you praying for? Because the Bible tells us to pray without ceasing. We can see that in verse 17 of First First Thessalonians chapter five. Pray without ceasing. What does that mean? It simply means that we we don't we don't stop our halt of prayer, meaning that prayer is a part of our daily routine. And when we say prayer, we can have that solemn prayer where we make sure that we intentionally cut time out in our day, whether morning, noon or night. Maybe it's that we have it scheduled 15, 20 minutes, morning, noon and night, taking time to go away and pray and seek the Lord. Some people um, pray when they get up. That's their uh, routine when they get up. Some people pray while they're driving in their car. Some people pray on their lunch break. Some people may pray when they have some time to spare. Uh, some people pray. It's their routine to make sure that they pray before they go to bed at night. Whatever your routine is, the thing is to remember to pray without ceasing. Because prayer is communication with God and prayer is what's keeping us in a place where and we are mindful of our spiritual development. See, when you don't pray, what you're actually allowing yourself to do is to give over to your own thinking. And those of us who are believers, we have made a commitment that our mind be persuaded of our own, but being in Christ Jesus, Jesus, meaning that we know how to think for ourselves. We don't give into cultish types of things where in what we see is popular and what everyone else is doing. We say, oh, let me join up with that. No, we have our own mind and that mind being what? In Christ Jesus. We are mindful of who we are spiritually because we know that we're in the world, but we are not of the world. So that means we don't fall into carnal things. It doesn't mean that we're not human. Yes, we are human, but we understand that when we accept the Lord into our lives, we discipline ourselves not to do the things that are considered worldly or carnal. We don't, it's intentional for us not to commit adultery. It's intentional for us not to lie and steal. It's intentional, intentional for us not to fall into gossip. It's intentional for us to follow the cop, the commandments of God and to stand upright and righteous before the Lord. It's intentional. So that's what that means when, when we say that we're in the world, but we're not of it. Meaning that we're, we don't fall under the auspices of what the world is doing because we know that the sin nature is in the world. These things that these are uh, the, uh, the blasphemy towards uh, God, the disrespect, the irreverence towards God in the earth today is it's becoming so heightened. You know, I can remember uh, back in the day, like, you know, when I was growing up in the seventies and eighties, when you walk by a church or you walk by a spiritual a place or a, or a house or, you know, whatever it may be, whether it was a synagogue, whether it was a, 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 a mosque, people just, it was something about being respectful that, you know, you got quiet when you walked by those places. Now today you, you see, I mean, beer cans, cigarettes, people walking by cursing, and they have no consideration that that's a spiritual place that represents where the spirit of God abides. So we get to a place where we say, okay, pray without ceasing so that we have the understanding to stay connected to God so that he can lead and guide us so that he can direct us and so that we have an understanding of how to be disciplined in the things of God. Verse 18, and everything give thanks for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning you. What are you praying for? We pray because we want to make sure that we are in the right space with God. We want to make sure that we are, to, are doing things that are pleasing in his sight. Because when, in order for us to give thanks unto God, we are recognizing that he's the one that's moving and proving that we are alive. It's in him we move, live, and prove our being. 
So when we are giving thanks, we are understanding that it's through the will of God that things are operating and we are a part of the plan of how things are going forward in our lives. See, when we fall on our own will, that's when we start gossiping. That's when we start talking about people who mean us well. That's when we fall prey to, to, to temptation because we are not, we're not praying like we're supposed to be praying. And then we are, we are not in the will of God of giving thanks. Let me tell you something. When you give God thanks, jealousy has no place in your life, really. Because when you give God, and when you think of the goodness of Jesus and all that he has done for you, you start thanking God and you start thinking, oh, Lord, you kept me. I, I was in the hospital and you brought me out. Every time I, 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 I have something that hits my body, I'm getting a report. And the doctor is telling me, oh, you may not be here, but I'm still here. Oh, I, I, you know, they told me that I wasn't going to be able to uh, uh, make it through this particular situation. I'm dealing with debt. I'm dealing with uh, uh, things on my job. But the Lord, Lord, you saw fit to see me through. Lord, I thank you. See, when you get yourself in a place of giving God thanks, you don't have time to talk about nobody. You don't have time to put nobody else down because once again, it works together. I pray with, I've been praying without ceasing. I've been praying for God to work in my life. I've been praying for God to move in my life. I've been praying for God to, 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 to do things uh, uh, that are better. Lord Jesus, I'm just looking to you to make change in my, and you stay in that state of prayer. You're praying for your family. You're praying for your friends. You see how all of what I'm saying? This is, this is your business. Your prayer is your business. When you are taking care of your business and you are praying and giving thanks to God, you don't have time for foolishness. You don't have time to give yourself over to foolish conversation. See, there's a difference. There's a difference and people don't understand. People are trying to pull you in and they don't understand when you say, I'm not, I'm not giving into that or I don't want to be around that or I don't want to deal with that. So yeah, sometimes we have to let information be known. We have to let information be known, but we're not tearing someone down. If information has to be shared, yeah, it has to be shared. If somebody's um, doing something unethical, that has to be shared because if it's not shared, then how can it be corrected, right? So yeah, it has to be known. And the enemy, what does the enemy do? The enemy continues to operate when he is not exposed. You have these people out here, they're child molesters. The only way they stop is when they are exposed. But as long as they think that they can keep getting away with, they keep harming and traumatizing children year after year until somebody speaks up and they get exposed. See, you got to expose the enemy. That is not gossiping. When you are telling something that a person is doing that's causing division, strife, it's unethical, it has to be exposed because if it's not exposed, that activity will continue. It will continue to keep growing and festering and it'll cause contention and it'll cause strife. No, you speak on what the situation is. You speak on what is not is right, but you're at the same time, you're not trying to tear a person down. See, gossip tears a person's down. Gossip tries to destroy a person's character. Gossip is harmful. And, and most of the time, the majority of the time, just about all the time, gossip is based on lies, untruths. So we have to be mindful of these things and we got to make sure that what we are praying for is for things to get better. What we are praying for is for change. What we are praying for is for God to make things happen and be mindful for what you're praying for. If you're praying, Lord, I, I, I want a spouse. I want somebody saved. I want somebody to know who read the word. I want somebody. Okay, you, God gives you all of those things and he answers your prayers. Don't get mad when that person comes into your life and they're looking at you and they're saying, okay, when you going to pick up your word, you ask for a praying spouse, but it's now, for, oh, it's time for us to pray. You can't get mad. Oh, I'm tired. I worked the 12 hour shift. No, it's time to get up and pray. You ask for a praying spouse. Come on. Some of us are praying for these jobs. We're praying for these positions. Some of us, we're, we're praying for, uh, 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 for, for Lord, move this person out the way so I can have it. Stop praying prayers like that. I'm going to tell you straight up. Stop praying prayers like that. See, because you don't know what that person is doing. 
And see, once you pray that prayer, watch what you're praying for. Because if God puts you in that position, you might sit there and you might be overwhelmed over the fact that, wow, I didn't even know that person was doing all that. But you so ready to move somebody out of the way because you're not praying. You, you, you're not praying the right things. You need to be praying, Lord, what's for me? Let me open up my see my eyes to see what's for me so that I can be able to arrange myself to properly get ready for the door of opportunity that you have with my name on it. See, that's how we got to pray. Stop praying. Stop praying. Oh, this that. Once again, I, I got to get when people are hurting and harming you because some of y'all are in some toxic abusive situations and you're saying lord i don't know how to deal with this you gotta help me lord get me out of this that's the prayer you need be see, all i'm telling you is your words are very powerful be specific and have understanding and how you are praying and what you are praying for because you, you lord this this person is uh, uh is really hurting me this person is really causing harm to me lord you that's your creation you know who this person better than I do. You told me to pray for my enemies. I'm praying. But Lord, please work on this person and, and Lord, help them to stop being a hindrance in my life. See, that's the kind of prayers we're supposed to pray. Not Lord, kill somebody, smite them, Lord, this, that, and other. No, because let me tell you, everybody that's in your life is there for a reason. It's a teaching moment. And the thing is, we just got a Lord. Show me how long this got to be or how, how how long I got to deal with this. Because he knows how much we can bear. But sometimes we got to take a breath. We got to step back. And you got to say, Lord, is this are you? Are you showing me something? Are you teaching me something? And we have to be ready to be that forever learner. I don't I don't know about you, but when you get around people who think that they know it all and they, then they can't learn anything else. Those those types of individuals, they lack character. They lack character. They they lack uh, uh, being effective in communication because they think they are the know-all. None of us know it all. God wouldn't have put, well, I believe it's over 7.8 billion people in the earth. God wouldn't put all these people in the earth if one person knew it all. Jesus came as the son of God from, uh, from on high and came into the earth and selected 12 people to walk with him. Come on, you can't do this by yourself because you don't know everything. I don't care how many certificates, I don't care how many programs you went to, how many degrees you have, you still don't know it all. And so you have to be willing to say, Lord, what lesson am I learning? This person is a thorn in my side. This person, I've done nothing but well to them. I've done nothing but help them. And they, they, this person keeps speaking ill, matter of ill uh, towards me and nasty things. Are, Lord, show me. Go to the point where you say, Lord, show me even how to pray for that person. See, because when you are praying in the flesh, when you're praying carnal thing, you once again, be careful what you pray for and how you pray. God sees the heart. God knows the heart. And we have to be mindful of that. You want in somebody, you, you pray, oh, I wish that was mine. I wish I had this, that, and other. And Lord, uh, no, no, no. Pray, Lord, what do you have for me? Let your will be done in my life. Lord, help me. Let the old man in me die so that I can stop looking at somebody else and coveting somebody else and thinking I could do what somebody else is doing. Show me what I need to do. And I'm telling you, when you pray like that, you'll begin to see yourself develop and change for the better. And that's what this walk is about. You want to be better. You don't want to keep living your life and it's just like you just keep constantly, you know, <clears throat> Seeing yourself in the same pattern, doing the same thing that's negative, doing the same thing that's not uh, 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 causing for things to develop and grow. You got to look at yourself and examine yourself and say, hey, what's going on? What do I need to change? So we once again, we pray without ceasing and in everything, give thanks. Those two things are important because when we pray, it helps us to become disciplined. It helps us to we speak to God and we wait for God. Because sometimes when you're praying and saying stuff, God gonna tell you, don't, 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 mm -mm. gotta tell you, 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 you praying. Yeah, I know you're praying for your enemy, but you're praying for harm for I'm not gonna harm your enemy. Gotta talk to you. Gotta tell you, I need you, for you to pray for them because I need for you to understand that they're going through. God will show, God will tell you and show you that sometimes your enemies may be going through some things. And you need to be praying for them. 
That's see, see, I don't like that. I know y'all don't like that, but that's that's the nitty gritty of being a true believer. When it says pray for your enemies, pray for those who uh, despitefully misuse you. God is talk, talk to me, talk to me, so I can tell you what to say and how to pray for your enemy. And see, we got to understand that we got to go deeper in God. We got to ex we, we got to have our expectations on higher heights in God going deeper into what he needs us to do so that we can soar higher in elevation on where he's taking us mentally and spiritually as well as physically. So when we understand, I know we say the scripture all the time, pray without ceasing, but today from that conversation that I had with my dear sister, from that conversation, God revealed it to me to speak and to share in another way. We give, we praise, we give, we pray and give honor and praise God because in giving thanks to God, when we give him thanks, we understand that the will of Christ is working in our lives and the things that concern us, they are working in our lives. That's why we give God thanks you because that's your business. See, when you, when you pray and when you give God thanks, that's your business. And you, when you focus on your business, let me tell you something. You don't have time to fall into foolishness. You don't. Because it'll keep you so busy that you say, ooh, I need to work on this on me. Ooh, I need to work on that. Ooh, I need to go ahead and change that. Ooh, I... When God starts revealing to you what needs to change, what needs to improve in your life, you don't have time to be worrying about other people. And when, when God lays someone on your heart to pray for, you're praying that God will better them. And that's even your enemies. You got to pray that God, that better them, better them, better them in, in the way that they're, they're thinking, better them in the way that they're operating. Lord, better them. And see, this is how we're going to be able to allow for our light to shine. This is how we're going to be able to continue to strive and thrive. I always put these um, indicators in because I, I always want people to be mindful. You were not created to be abused. When we say pray for someone, you pray for someone and you leave it with God to deal with. If you don't have to be around that person, do not force it. You don't have to prove anything when you praying for someone, when you have forgiven someone, you don't have to, you could just let it be known as forgiven. You ever have that conversation? Even if they never apologize, just let them know. I see you and it's already forgiven. And see, some people don't even understand that when you're a believer and you operate in true love and you're praying and you're giving thanks to God, you, you can forgive a person right in the midst of them doing an ought against you. Right, right there. You can be already forgiven them. But that does not mean that you have to, while they are yet in a place or in a state of mind where they have not been uh, in a place to meet God, where they are allowing for God to work on them, you don't have to go through that process with them wherein they are abusing you. What is abuse? Constantly having someone screaming and hollering at you, talking nasty. And some people know how to be polite and scream without screaming and talk down to you and talk nasty to you. You don't have to be in that type of environment. You do not have to allow for that to go on. If you don't have to be in that, stay out of it. I know some people on your workplaces, you there for those couple of hours, but you don't, if you don't have to be up underneath that person, got to make ways where you can work some, you know, in your workspace, they work over there, this, that, and the other, but you do not have to subject yourself to that type of abuse. It's not healthy. It's not how, it's not why God has designed you. Cause some people think that, oh, I, I, I'm supposed to be here to be, you know, that no, because I'm, I'm teaching them, you know, that no, you love you. Say, Hello. Good morning. You speak, you do what you need to do, but you do not have to allow for someone to keep saying nasty things to you. You don't have to keep allowing for somebody to be screaming and yelling in your face. No, don't let people mis misunderstand your meekness for weakness. No. Abuse is abuse. And sometimes people don't even realize that they are being abusive. When a person, they have some, it's a narcissistic spirit. When people, they do things and they don't, if you bring it to their attention, especially when you bring it to their attention, that there was an offense and they're just like, okay, and, and they don't apologize to it. 
right there, you have to realize that that person is not there. They're not on that level. They're not there with you. And it's not about thinking you're better than anybody, but they're just not there. They're not on that level. And that's another thing that people, we keep doing. It's, oh, oh, you think you're better. No, it's not that you think you're better, but we cannot keep allowing for ourselves to be in the midst of people who do not have the same like-mindedness and they want to be toxic and continue to pull you down because you worked hard and asking God to develop you, to change you and to enhance you so that you can be better. And they're looking at you and they don't understand that. It's not for you to explain it to them. It's for them to discipline themselves and get in a place wherein they can seek God for themselves. And you praying, Lord, help them. Show them what they need to do to get it right. But you do not have to take any form or type of abuse. No, you don't. Because I know a lot of times, you know, uh, and, and when you grow when you grow up in um, church and things like that, you know, they tell you to turn the other cheek. Yeah, we turn the other cheek, but that doesn't mean that you keep sitting there for your face to get slapped. <laughs> now, after you don't turn the cheek, see, the thing is, okay. The first time you, you, you got slapped, right? And it's just like, oh, you recognize that this person has an abusive spirit, right? You turn the other cheek, meaning that you're turning the other cheek to say, okay, I know your spirit. Let me turn. I'm not going to be physical back with you, but let me turn my cheek and get away from you because you're not in the right state of mind. That's what turning the cheek is. It's not about sitting somewhere and just letting somebody keep slapping your face back and forth. No, that's foolishness. God didn't create us for that. He didn't create us for that. So let's be mindful. Let's be mindful to stay in prayer. Let's be mindful to be thankful unto God. Because when we're thankful unto God, this is the will of God for us to be thankful unto him in Christ Jesus. Because he's, he's concerned about those things that pertain to us. And see, when we do that, concerning you, it says, thanks for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning you. It didn't say concerning everybody else. Concerning you. When we do those things, pray without ceasing, give God thanks, we are taking care of our business. And we are mindful of what we are praying for. And we are mindful of the, the, the importance of how we speak to God. We, are, we are, are, are mindful that we are giving him reverence and understanding that he knows a plan for our lives and that faith without works is dead. We're going to be operative to the things that God is speaking into our lives and we're going to work at our soul salvation. We're going to love our brothers and sisters and we're going to follow the commandments, but we're also going to keep ourselves in a state of contentment, understanding that we are disciplined through prayer and through supplication. That's that. That's how God is working on us. That's what God is, 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 is. He wants to reveal to us. Those of us who are part of love of Jesus deliverance, we are moving towards our solemn assembly coming in the month of January. We will be on our fast as uh, collectively as our, uh, uh, the ministry pertains to us as congregants of love of Jesus deliverance ministries. And so I just want us to get into that place to start realizing how am I praying? What am I praying for? And I, I need for us to correct that. If you're praying for somebody to be hard because somebody is hurting you, I understand. One thing God knows our heart. He understands what we're going through. But always remember to pray for your enemies in a way where God will change them according to his will and purpose. Not, not for what we want, but for how God wants. Because I'm going to tell you this. Some of, some of your enemies, God will turn it around and they will become your friends. Yes, yes, yes. It will happen. Some of your enemies, God will, when you're praying, Lord, sh open up their eyes. Let them see. Uh, when you start praying, God will honor your prayers and God will turn it around. And before you know it, that person who was, you know, doing all manner of evil towards you comes your way and say, listen, I'm sorry. I apologize. I want to get it right with you. Can we start over? Don't God can do it. Don't tell me, he, oh, God can do it. Yes, he can. So fret not yourself. Don't let these things make you feel miserable. You're doing what you're supposed to do. When you walk with God and you do what you're supposed to do, you're going to have some things that happen in you. And you're like, why? Why is this? A it's okay. Remember, it's a be, a be a forever learner. If you're always a forever learner, you always say, Lord, what lesson do I have to learn in this? What I'm dealing with, what lesson are you trying to teach me? And when you humble yourself unto the Lord in that manner, God will show you how to move and transition 
through all of the things that you are dealing with and you'll move and deal with it where and you're just not moved anymore. I'm telling you some like some like you know, if you somebody said, Oh, somebody said this about you're not shocked. You may be disappointed, but it's not like you shocked. It's not like your heart start quivering. See, when we get to that point in our lives when our our nerves stop start stop shaking and when our heart is easy, the rhythm of our heart is easy when we hear rattling news. God has worked on you. God has God has been developing you. And, and you'll even see it. You'll recognize. You say, wow, I, I didn't cry this time. Oh, my hands didn't shake this time. Oh, my heart didn't jump this time. Oh, I wasn't, I didn't feel the need to cuss somebody out this time. You know why? Because you are allowing for the spirit of God to work on you. And he's doing just that. Heavenly Father, we just thank and praise you for your divine word. We thank you for who you are. We thank you for your word from on high. We thank you for how you speak to us, oh God. Oh God, I thank you for your rich word because we can read a scripture a hundred times. But Father God, every time you reveal something new to us that will meet us where we need to be met. So for that, I'm so forever grateful. Father, I pray in the name of Jesus that first and foremost, you have mercy on us. As we come to you, we ask for atonement. We repent of anything that we have done to come short of your glory, creating us a clean heart and renew the right spirit. Father God, I pray, Lord Jesus, that you, Lord, begin to just reveal to us, oh God, how to enhance our prayer life so that we have a better understanding of when we pray, what we are praying for and how to acknowledge you in the right way so that things, Father God, will change for the better. Father, we pray for those who despitefully misuse us, those who speak all manner of evil, oh God, towards us. Lord, we ask that you would first and foremost have mercy on them. Lord, let them know, oh God, that Lord Jesus, that the only thing they have to do is call upon your name and you'll be a present help to them as well. Oh God, whatever they are insecure about within themselves, Father, I pray right now that you would begin to show them the things that they need to be grateful for, wherein it will enhance them to be better in the way they do things, in the way they speak about others. Father, I pray right now, Lord Jesus, the obstacles that are in our way, Lord Jesus, that you would just move them. Help us to realize that, Father God, that the battle belongs to you. It's not ours. Lord, when you reveal something to us, oh God, help us to pray unto you and to pray in the right manner so that you can handle it. You, you said in your word that we can cast all of our cares upon you for you care for us. Help us to cast our cares upon you and let you deal with the rest. And show us, Father, how to move forward so that we are not stunted in our growth, so that we are not stunted in the call, in the vision, in the things that you have assigned us to do. Help us, Father. Lord, I pray right now for every distraction that tries to blind your people from moving forward, that you would take the scales off of their eyes so that they can recognize the enemy's work and that they will pray without ceasing so that they can be strengthened by you and so that you can give them the wisdom to work through it. Father, I thank you for you will never leave us nor forsake us, that you will give us insight and wisdom and that you will show us what we need to do and how to get things done. Lord, for that, I say thank you. Lord, I thank you in advance, oh God, for every testimony, oh God. I thank you for every victorious story that's going to come forth because your people, Father God, they are praying without ceasing and they are continuing to give you thanks because this is the will through Christ Jesus concerning each and every one of us individually. We thank you, Father. We bless you and we give you honor. In Jesus' name, amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Our God is so good. Hallelujah. I just want you all to be encouraged. Let the Lord be continue to be the lifter of your head. Do not, do not allow for anything that's going on to deplete or pull your joy. You keep pressing, you keep smiling, you keep saying, the joy of the Lord is my strength. You keep on 
doing what God is calling you to do because there's so many people that you have not yet encountered and you're worrying maybe about this one or two little person or this one little group and there's hundreds and thousands of others that you have not yet met that God wants you to be able to go in front of to be a light to. Don't let that little click or few pull you down. Continue to do what God has called you to do. The joy of the Lord is your strength. Be strengthened, my brother. Be strengthened, my sister. And walk with the king. Come on, let's give God some praise. Hallelujah. Come on, let's give him that this moment. Come on, let's be grateful. Come on, just take a minute to think about the goodness of Jesus and all hallelujah. that thank he has God. done. Yes. Let's just take a minute just to say, Lord, hallelujah. hallelujah. I thank you for victory. I thank you, yes. Father, for working this situation out. Hallelujah. I thank you, Father yes. God, for yes. you will arise and you will allow for yes. my enemies yes. to be scattered. Hallelujah. I thank you, Lord, because yes. you're going to give me the tenacity hallelujah. and the stamina. Yes to keep on standing yes. no matter what the enemy may try to come my way mm. but father i thank you that you're going to raise a yes. standard yes. lord i'm grateful father god yes. because i know that you brought me out before mm. and i know that you're going to do it again yes. thank you lord jesus thank you, thank you father god Hallelujah. thank you for allowing me father yes. god to have the mindset to be a forever learning mm. being open to receive whatever lessons oh god that you are yes. bringing my way so that i can better myself yes. so that the old man and me must surely die. Lord, yeah. I thank you. Come on, thank put you. your hands together. Yeah. Come on, lift your voice. Say hallelujah. hallelujah. Lord, I thank you for working yes. it out. Oh God, I thank you for turning things around. Yes. He's working it out. Yes, he is. He's yeah. working it out. Don't you worry about it. If you're going to worry, then you can't pray, right? Uh -huh. But when we pray, we're not going to worry about say nothing it, because it, it's it. in God's hand. And when it's in God's hand, no man or no woman yes. can do nothing about it. Hallelujah. hallelujah. So Lord, we say thank you. Lord, thank we you. give you honor. Lord, Lord, we give you praise for working yes. it out. Hallelujah. For the good of those who trust and believe in him. Yes. Hallelujah. He's working it out. He's working yes, it out. Yes. Somebody praising the Lord right now when you get in a breakthrough because you got the message that you needed to hear that he's working it out. Don't mm. you stop praying. Don't you stop giving God thanks. Don't you stop smiling. You keep on getting up. Hallelujah. Yes. You know the enemy gets mad every time a child of God gets up and puts their feet on the ground and they get they get up and they go about the course of the day. Ain't nobody mad but the enemy. So you make them mad. You yeah. do what you do your job and make the enemy mad yeah. by saying the joy of the Lord is my strength. Be strengthened, my brother. Yeah. Be strengthened, my sister. Don't give up. Don't give in. Hallelujah. Mm. There's a great testimony. Hallelujah. Come on. Continue to work the work. Come on. Continue to do what you're doing. Yeah. See what the end's going to be. And you know what it says in the end? you win. You know mm. what it says in the end? You're more than a conqueror. You're mm. victorious say through it, Christ say, Jesus. Say Hallelujah. Glory. Come on, give him praise. Hallelujah. Uh, Glory to your name. Hallelujah. Uh, Bless the name of Jesus. Glory to God. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Mm. We are here to ensure that you stay connected with the Heavenly Father. We are here to make sure that you Allow for your spirit, your spiritual growth to do just that. Continue to grow. Don't get stunted. Don't you allow for anything or anyone to stop you from what God has assigned for your life, yes. for the job, for the task, whatever it may be. Trust in God, knowing that when he puts your name on something, your name is on it. Nobody else can erase it. <laughs> Nobody else can take it because what God has for you. It is for you. It's for you. Say it. We thank God for you joining in on today. And our prayer is that the blessing of the Lord continue to make you rich, adding no sorrow to it until we meet or speak again. Hold on to God's unchanging hand because he's not going to let go of you. Oh, yes. Trust and believe that he loves you that much. Each and every one of our names are engraved in the palm of his hand. And we are the apple of his eye. And we leave you with this. I am blessed. And I cannot be cursed. Because Jesus, Jesus is Lord. Lord. God bless you. Mwah. God bless you. you. Love your family.